Alright, this is Big Boss, this is Fox Town Woodsball coming to you from Fort Lauderdale and for this particular video we're going to be discussing marker accessories, marker add-ons. This is going to be part of our Tactical Paintball 101 series and I'll be talking about some of the various odds and ends that players would want to put on their guns as far as Milsim, Woodsball, scenario games as far as all that goes. So. Let's get to it. Okay, we're back and now as you can see the X7 is broken down into all of its little tactical options that I've accumulated over the past couple years and let's get to it. Now, I kept on the custom made extended front end that me and my brother worked on. This setup allows me to do anything from grenade launchers or anything like that. It allows it to have more of a rifle or carbine feel to it. I kept on the sights which are airsoft versions of the Magpul flip up backup sights. Usually I keep these on here in the event my primary sight, my red green dot, if it were to malfunction for any reason I could easily take it off, flip up the sights, I'm good to go. I also have on here a Stove pipe for my cyclone. This allows me to have a clear sight picture when I'm engaging targets. So that's another reason why I carry it on. And flipping it over, we've got the RIS quick detach sling point here. So it allows me to adjust where I want my sling mount. Very good piece of kit. Very good for operator aesthetics. Now moving on, we've got my stock here, which is the airsoft version of a Colt SCW stock with an actual AR-15 buffer tube. Now in order to use this on Next 7, you need a special end cap for it. So that's why I went to GibbsPaintball.com. I will be posting a link in the description to this video where you can get this beautifully done machined end cap now moving on got my tasco 1x30 red green dot site you can control your windage and your elevation on here very good for fast target acquisition as well as being able to switch between different light intensities so on and so forth does very well if when running a paintball mask with this just attached to the gun it's a little hard to see so compensate with the sight riser now sight risers you can find just about anywhere these are relatively cheap to acquire easy to get anywhere from five to thirty five dollars a piece depending upon where you look now moving on i got this four power hunting scope as can see by the optic usually use this for sighting in on stuff you could easily use it as a hunting scope observation scope or if you're using first strike rounds this makes a very effective sniper scope now moving on from that <clears throat> you've also got your acid tactical Green laser, ideal for fast target acquisition and low light combat conditions. Fitted to an RIS rail. You could have this thing mounted on your gun, probably your pistol if you know how to do it right, as well as a few other little things. One thing about this laser is that you do not aim for a person's face or eyes. You generally aim it toward the chest. Vertical grip. You could give yourself a more natural feel when you're shooting. Helps you keep on target a little easier. Very nice. This is generic. You can get this from an airsoft shop, paintball shop. Generally a nice little idea to have. Three point sling. My preferred style. That's very versatile. You could use it for just about anything. Has well, as I hooked on here, the quick detach sling mounts on um, both sides of the gun. That way I can easily take it off for maintenance, 
switch over from one gun setup to the other. My SCW stock right here does have provisions for a quick detach sling points, so makes it tactically effective. I've kept out my standard X7 barrel and front end as it was when I first received the gun. That way it allows me to switch up for close quarters combat as well as if I want to just go compact for the day. Primary barrel is a Lapco Big Shot Assault Barrel with the birdcage muzzle on here. This is typical of your M16A2 style, though you can switch it off for mock suppressors as well as different muzzles like your AK style and anything like that. Now flashlight. This is from Asset Tactical as I said about the laser. As you can see, the on off button right here and the always ambiguous pressure switch. Great for close quarters, low light or total darkness. This one in particular has an adjustable beam setting on here so I could bring it in tighter, I could open it up. Opens up your options for what you need for that particular time. Grenade launchers. These are pretty controversial depending on where you go and what you look, read on the forums regarding them. Airsoft guys use them as well as these things are sanctioned at Viper Games as well as a few other scenarios. You can use this thing for launching Nerf rockets or if you have the S Thunder Shocker shells, load your paintballs up into them and it becomes a very good shotgun for close quarters work. Now, you can also get rail covers to cover up your RIS rails here so that way you're not catching anything on these sharp little corners or if you just don't like the feel of these rails. Now I know a few places that you can get these kind of add-ons. I will be posting the links to them in the description to this video. And you'll be able to read a full written version of all this stuff at outerheavenpaintball.blogspot.com. The link to the blog will be in the description of this video as well. Don't forget to check out Outer Heaven Paintball on Facebook. There will be this link in the description to this video for that, as well as the link for our team, Foxhound Woods Ball, via Facebook. Anyway, this is Big Boss, and I'm out of here.